Hello everyone, it's been about two years since our last channel update video. The one where I went back on my word, didn't do anything I said I was going to do in that video and was so embarrassed by it, I have made it private so <laughs> you can't find it anymore. Um, but you know, it's been two years. So I think, you know, let's just kind of have a little little talk, have uh, give you guys an idea of where I want to take the, the channel here in the next few months to a year or so. This, I usually have this stuff like scripted out and I kind of like read off the script and I didn't do that this time. So this one's going to be way chaotic. There's going to be a lot of uhs and ums. I'm just going to stop because I forgot what I'm talking about. That just happens to me. There's going to be a lot of jump cuts too as I edit around what I'm going to say. But uh, I'll, I'll just go ahead and start. Now before I actually talk about where the channel is headed... I'm going to talk about my personal life a little bit. I, I usually don't talk about my personal life. That's a very deliberate choice. I like to keep it private. Part of the reason is because I don't think really anyone cares. Like anyone that comes across my channel really cares about me. Like the guy behind uh, the videos, the guy that made the videos. Partly, I mean, part of it is a deliberate choice. I don't put myself in my videos. I don't market myself as a personality. I don't do anything like that. I really just rely on the algorithm to get people who are interested in the topics um, that I make the videos about to find the videos, you know? The the other part of it is that I'm making a choice to put myself out onto the internet and there's people around me that don't necessarily, like they're not making that choice. So what I mean by that is like friends and family. Like I don't want friends and family to be attacked or anything like that to face controversy because of something I say. I don't think I'm a controversial individual, but I don't want someone else to face repercussions for something that I've done online. I just think personally, that's just a responsible thing to do. So that that's part, you know, those are reasons why I keep uh, my personal life private. But I'm going to peel the veil away and let you have a glimpse into stuff that happens behind the scenes, if you will. Now, I know, you know, some people, they don't care about what, you know, about me or my life or anything like that. If you just want to hear about what the channel is going to be doing moving forward, uh, if you skip to this timestamp right here, that's when I start talking about channel stuff. So you can skip all of this stuff. Also, for those of you that are interested in the personal life stuff, it's pretty dark and pretty sad. I'm just going to be upfront about it. So if you don't really want to hear sad stuff, like I might get emotional. I can, I can feel it on me right now. If you don't want to hear sad stuff, just skip to the, the channel stuff. And I think, <laughs> I don't want to say you'll be happier, but you know, you won't hear sad stories and stuff. So, you know, the last year, year and a half has been pretty rough. I think it's been pretty rough on most people as they've have come to deal with lockdown. I'm sure some people have taken it better than most. I, like I said, I'm a shy guy. I'm an introverted guy. I'm absolutely fucking fine being in my house all day. Like, that's just how I am. But, you know, other people have had very stressful times and stuff like that. My wife and I, on top of those stresses of, you know, just being an adult in the society and world we live in now, uh, we've had a lot more stresses on us. In March of this year, uh, my brother passed away very suddenly, uh, very tragically. Uh, like I said, I don't want to put all of his info out into the world because, you know, maybe he didn't want that. I'm just going to keep it, you know, basic, vague. It was very sudden, very tragic. Um, and, you know, it, it, it hurt, you know, because he's my older brother, so. I won't see him at holidays anymore, stuff like that. Um, you know, he taught me a lot, not even just teaching me. He taught me a lot, like, indirectly. Like, the choices he made in his life were like, you know, I think that's something I want to do. Or, you know, other choices he made in his life I was like, you know, I don't think <laughs> I want to do that. You know, just like with anybody that you have a relationship with, it's, you just learn a lot. And to have that be gone now is just very sad, you know, I, feel so bad for his wife she, I mean we keep her in the family she's still around and we we love her like you know I mean she was a sister to us so we still love her but you know that 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 hurt so um and then in fuck, June of this year I think someone else really close to us got diagnosed with cancer um 
I mean, same kind of thing, like very sudden, didn't really have any kind of idea. So, I mean, there's a bunch of uncertainty, doubt, you know, what's going to happen? What, what are we going to need to do to either <laughs> make sure they're okay or, you know, what's going to happen? Luckily, the person in question was able to get surgery and the cancer was able to be removed. Um, it sounds like for follow-up appointments, uh, they had like a follow-up appointment. They didn't find any more cancerous cells, so that's a relief. I think the person in question has a follow-up appointment, I don't know, a couple years from now to make sure it doesn't recur. Um, and then, you know, if they're still good then, then it's all good, you know? So, but that was a huge, huge stress on us. And at a time where we didn't really need one, and the reason why is because this is the big one. In January of this year, my wife and I had a baby boy. But what should have been a day of happiness and joy was rife with anxiety and uncertainty and doubt because, well... We knew when he was, when my wife was still pregnant with him, that he had heart defects, severe heart defects, um, and they were going to require surgery, like major surgery. It wasn't, one of it was a hole, but it was a major hole in an abnormal place and a couple of other defects. I could literally just go down the rabbit hole and probably spend the next seven and a half hours talking about this, but I won't. I'll just try and keep it short and simple. So we, it was a highly stressful day for us because what, you know, while my wife was carrying him, she could take care of him. But once he was born, like he was on his own, like bodily, you know what I mean? Like we could help feed him and do all this other stuff, but like it, it, it's on him now to exist. Like he isn't living off of, well, off of us. So the thing is, though, everything that could have gone wrong did, pretty much. Um, his heart defects, when he was, when he was still, um, when my wife was still pregnant with him, it, it started as one thing, then it became another thing, then it was both things, and then it was only one of the things. And then when he was born, it turned out it was all of them, and it was pretty bad. It was going to require major surgery, and even the heart surgeon was like, oh, shit, I don't, <laughs> I don't, this is a unique case, which isn't something you want to hear medically, right? You want to hear like, hey, I'm sick, they look at you, they're like, oh, here, take this medicine, you'll be fine. You know what I mean? That's what you want to hear. So for the heart surgeon to look at him, be like, oh, shit, well, <laughs> this is going to be challenging. This is a unique case, you know, you're like, fuck, great. So... That happened. Then we found out that he actually was born with more defects than just the heart defect. He had a TE fistula, which basically means your esophagus doesn't connect down to your stomach. It actually connects to your windpipe. So within 24 hours of being born, he had to have surgery to fix that. Um, a few weeks later, he, the, he had some blood panels that showed that his white blood cell white blood cell count was low or abnormal the neonatologist the doctor tried you know assuring us like hey sometimes that happens it's a false positive maybe let's not you know get ahead of ourselves well it turns out he also had an immune deficiency um his thymus gland as part of the immune system was small so his immune system was weak so he had an immune deficiency um as a result of the first surgery, I told you about the TE fistula, he had to have a breathing tube put in. And every time we tried to extubate him, basically take the breathing tube out, he never, it never worked. He never passed. So they had to keep re-intubating him. Eventually, it got to the point where he needed a tracheostomy. So he had a breathing tube in his throat um, for several months. <laughs> And then probably the fucking worst thing was a nightmare. Uh, he had a surgery to have a G tube put into his belly. Uh, it's basically just a tube or button that comes out so that you can just push food into his belly. He needed that because of his TE fistula. He, he couldn't eat. 
He couldn't eat like a normal person. He couldn't swallow down his esophagus. It's a way to use that to, you know, push the food into his belly. The problem was when they put it in, it started leaking stomach juices. So they had to take it out, put a different one in. That didn't work either. So they had to like kind of close it, but they wanted to kind of keep it open in case they wanted to put a new one in. That just ruptured open. They tried to put a new one in. Didn't work. Dude, they did so much stuff. They took it out. Eventually, like after months and months of doing all this shit, they, they just took it out and just sewed it shut completely. There was a point where it looked like he was going to be able to keep it in, and he actually ripped it out, you know, because he's a baby, and babies don't really have control of their arms, and he just fucking yanked it out, dude. And so after that, he he like when he pulled it out they pulled it and before they like surgically closed it he just had a hole just a hole in his stomach where you could like see inside of him it was pretty fucking brutal but basically you know like everything that could have gone wrong did you know but he stepped he kept fighting he kept fighting he kept fighting you know and it was our sweet little boy uh i forgot to say it earlier his name is kieran k-i-e-r-a-n kieran And man, what a fucking fighter, dude. Whew! Man, he fought. But, uh... But it eventually got to be too much for him. And he passed away this month. So... He passed away in his sleep, so it was peaceful for him. He wasn't in pain or nothing like that, so... So you can see why I say we've had a rough time. We've had a pretty rough time. So that was seven months of being in the hospital every day. He never got to come home, you know, but he was surrounded by people who loved him the whole time, mommy and daddy, and the nurses and doctors, you know, they all loved him. He was a sweet little guy, so... But his fight's over. He's at peace now. So So my wife and I are grieving a bit, trying to pick up the pieces and find out how do we go back to normal. You know, what's the new normal? You know, so. So what does that mean for the YouTube channel? Well, uh, I can tell you for certain, usually when you go through monumental events like that, it really puts your life in perspective. You know what I mean? Like, you start to see the things that are important to you, the things that aren't important to you. And I can tell you for certain, uh, that I just, I fucking love making videos, man. Just talking about games that, you know, other people like and want to hear a dude tell the story about. I'm just going to continue with that type of content, you know? I'm not going to try anything new or crazy. Like I said, I'm not trying to be a personality or, you know, anything like that. I'm just, you know, I just like to do this. And it's awesome that other people like to listen to people do it. So, yeah. So, I'll, I'll still be doing this. Um, what I'm working on now, it's been like four months since I think the Hades video. Uh, I've been working on a... F- this is a video that was not recommended by anybody. At, like, no viewers at all. <laughs> Uh, I've been working on a full chronology of The Last of Us series. So that thing is over two hours long, so it's longer than the Hotline Miami full chronology. Uh, That is almost done. As of right now, I have to record the final shots, uh, edit those, and put the music in. Uh, That'll be done. Hopefully within the next week or two, it'll be done. I can tell you for certain, if it's not uploaded by September 13th, then it won't be uploaded until October. It's just, it's just a personal thing. We're, we're taking some time off. So After that, the next story summary I'll be tackling is Deadbolt, which is uh, recommended by several uh, commenters. Mother Russia Bleeds will be after that, also recommended by several viewers. After that, it's kind of tenuous. I don't really have anything lined up exactly. Uh, I can say uh, Blasphemous, just the uh, the Game Kitchen, the developers for Blasphemous, just announced that they're having another free DLC that's due to come out this December. I'm sure there's going to be at least a video made on that. Maybe more, we'll see. Katana Zero is meant to get a free DLC at some point, and I'm sure I'll make a video on that. 
and kind of, you know, talk about how what it adds to the end of the story and stuff like that. And then I, I'm, I don't really have anything planned after that, but I mean, there's still going to be videos made, you know. Um, the only other thing I was kind of thinking is uh, Dead Cells kind of just released some new lore rooms, so there may be a sh super short uh, video talking about those new lore rooms, what it means for the final content expansion that I imagine we'll be getting. But uh, yeah, so I stream sometimes on YouTube, but <laughs> it's actually pretty funny because the streams on YouTube actually hurt the channel. I'll, I'll, every time I stream, dozens of people unsubscribe. It's pretty funny. I like it. It's, it's pretty funny. So I'm not going to be streaming on YouTube as much, but I may venture out into Twitch. Uh, no promises. We'll kind of see how it goes. Uh, but what I can say, though, is the stream, the last stream I had with my super best friend, Leo, uh, if you didn't tune into that one, we had a lot of fun. It was awesome. Uh, Leo is going to be starting a Twitch channel. So I'm sure I'm going to be on his Twitch channel a lot. So if you could and support my good friend, Leo, he's super funny. He's one of the funniest dudes I know. He's amazing. I love him so much. If you could, uh, you know, if you're interested in seeing him stream, go ahead and give him a follow on his Twitch profile. I'm sure I'll put it in the description. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. But uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it for the channel stuff. So those that watch this, thank you so much for watching. Um, I still, to this day, read every single comment. So I don't know what point I'm making by saying that is. It's just awesome to me hear from you guys, I guess, you know. So... I think that's it, so I will just cut it here. Thank you all so much for watching, for the continued support. I appreciate it so much, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.